Okay, uh, we're Facebook Live with uh, the new Trans Am model kits that I ordered from Germany. Um, I got a sneaking suspicion that they're okay. Uh, there's some damage on the box. Let me uh, get the phone out of the holder. There's some damage. You might want to turn the volume down on one of your phones. You got an echo going. There's some damage on the box, and uh, if I can find it, there it is. So we're going to pull that model kit out, but we're also going to record what the packing is. This is a pretty well known seller. So, I used to build all of the 1-8 scale model kits back in the 70s. I built them all. The only ones that I have not built was the original Trans Am, the Turbo, <coughs> the 79 Firebird. I hadn't built that one. I did not build the Corvette or the Camaro. But, we are going to find out. So, uh, seems pretty well packed on the end. But, as you can see, there's no packing here. Which... I would like, I would have packed it that way, but that's me. Okay, as you can see, these are pretty big boxes. So, one of these, um, I expected these to be wrapped in plastic. They are not, which surprises me even more. Um, they are tape sealed, so that's a plus. So we're going to go ahead and put this on the floor and pull one of these out. Let's see if I can pull this out. It looks okay. It doesn't look, it doesn't look damaged at all. So, <clears throat> I'm going to pull these out and check them out. Got my uh, little inspector over here. my post office inspector Denver the cat he is all personality he's got more personality than five cats so that one's okay That one seems to be fine. We have instructions or something peeking out here. That one seems fine. That one seems fine. <clears throat> well, got a little bugger on the back, but I don't think that 
<clears throat> I don't think that hurt the hurt the model kit at all. We will find out. So these two are going to go into storage. Keep hitting my hat on the camera. Nice box uh, artwork. Greatly improved from the old monogram kits. And if you guys. <coughs> And if you guys remember the old monogram kits, they used to have some kid with a model kit built, smiling at it, enjoying the model. I miss that. I actually miss that. All right. Everybody ready? Make sure you got your uh, beverage. I have mine. Two, two tabs. So I plan on photographing uh, each and every part. Um, I run several model groups and I have photographed each and every part in high resolution. The instructions and everything else we don't have to do because <clears throat> the instructions are already on a PDF on the group so we don't have to do those. Um, I'm going to photograph Oh, we have an addendum. So I am going to scan this for you guys. It says, Dear customer, unfortunately, mistakes have occurred in the assembly manual. Part I-150 will not be used. I don't know what that is. It looks like a sway bar or something, but we'll figure it out. Wow. They went all out on this. Really nice instruction manual. Full color. And again, uh, the instruction manual is on the group. Um, the advertisements say that this is a demanding model. That's no bullshit. This looks very demanding. Really, really nice. <laughs> that makes me laugh. An American flag sold in Germany. An, an American flag model kit sold in Germany. So, uh, these are loose in the box. Make sure you put that away. Put it in there. But uh, we're going to leave it out because I'm going to scan that for you guys. And then... There is another flyer in here. Um, C. 
safety advice, and it's written in several languages. Do not drink, eat, or smoke while working with products containing solvents. Well, there goes the beer. The work area should be clean and free of obstacles at a safe distance from any area where food is kept. Um, please use only the tools included in the kit or recommended in the user manual. So if this has tools in the kit, that's going to be a big plus. Anyway, I'll scan that for you guys, too. Um, the bags are not sealed. They are taped. Yep. Typical 79 TA. Now, just a heads up, um, the guy that does a lot of photo etch for Titanic, um, Neil Woods in the UK, were working on photo etch for the dash, the glove box lock, the radio knobs, um, all of the air conditioner vents and everything else, all of the emblems on the car were working on photo etch for that. He has to get a kit yet, so it's in the preliminary stages. Nothing is written in stone. What I'd like to see is somebody come up with some sort of a conversion to make these seats fold forward like the real car did. And yes, I've ridden in a 79 TA, so there's a few of you here on the group that owned them, and we're going to need your help with photos and everything else. So as you can see, the body is in gray. And this is tape. Now I don't know. Yeah, it's double taped. I don't think it's sealed, sealed. I'm not going to go too far with this. This is just kind of a run through of what the model has. Wow. I like, I, I'm liking the detail on this, I really do. I'd really like to see somebody that is a machinist come up with the pulleys to where we can have an electric motor um, in the block to where we can push on the gas and then the fan blade will spin. I did that with my model cars back in the 70s. Of course I was in shop class too and got an A on it. Really really nice detail.
axle, starter motor, fan shroud, heads, exhaust manifold, sway bar, no, that's it, tie rods, Really nice Pontiac. Um, I'd recognize the Pontiac motor anywhere. Worked on a few. My parents had a 75 Grand Prix. Um, been under the hood of that car many times. Looks really nice. Again, if you're just joining us, <clears throat> these bags are not sealed like your normal kits. They are just folded up and taped closed. The only thing that I was really looking forward to is the clear part. We'll get to them in a minute. Now these, the chrome parts, one, one sprue is sealed. And the two sprues are sealed. And they are the honeycomb wheels, the 77, 78, and uh, 79 non-turbo wheels. It does have a halfway decent dash in it. Again, we're going to be looking at doing photo etch on this. The non-turbo hood. Nice, nice, nice. Really nice nose. And again, we're gonna we're thinking about doing um, photo etch emblems for the Pontiac um, on the nose and the front fenders. Really, really nice detail. I'm I'm happy with that. Typical one-sided exhaust. Anybody with a decent brake line kit can make their own. I made my own exhaust with uh, aluminum and brass back in the 70s. The uh, the uh, orange Corvette 1.8 scale. I'd put a hairdryer motor underneath the hood and did a Corvette summer 
with red Christmas paint metal flake and um, you hold the cigarette up by the in by the intake and it would blow it out the exhaust so on these clear parts I was talking with Gary uh, Gary Cheddar and we got to talking about the uh, t-tops and them uh, they should be, should be or should have been done in a tent um, so I am wondering if regular car window tent would work on these so we may try that these are constantly broke in the other kits that you see on on eBay even a even a sealed kit um, you constantly see the windows broke or the front windshield broke fighting a plastic bag here. I like what I see. Um, this was a long time coming to do a non-turbo version and um, I did read the um, I did read the uh, advertisements. It said that um, it has the decals for both movie car versions. I don't know what that means. I would assume Smokey and the Bandit and or Smokey and the Bandit one. Um, am I going to be surprised if it's also one? Absolutely. We have people working on an actual paint mask to paint the artwork on the car instead of a decal. So that's coming. Maybe. I'm not real happy that the flares are molded onto the car. It is what it is. I'm not a Trans Am expert, but we can go through um, actual cars and find out what is and what is not correct, depending upon how analytic you want to be. I like what I see. Um, we are going to be doing a battery box for this to where you can put in uh, several AA batteries to be able to run the lights and everything else that's coming Now, everybody's thinking, <clears throat> uh, why don't you create something for the interior? We are. Um, we are going to be doing photo etch for the ashtrays, the door handles, any door trim panels, the shifter. Um, we may even come up with a photo etch foldable uh, where you fold it up and make it a CB radio. Anybody know what the CB radio make and model was in Smokey and the Bandit and Smokey and the Bandit 2? Does anybody know? I do. 
Huh? In Smokey and the Bandit 1977 movie, it was a 23 channel Radio Shack. I know that for a fact. Smokey and the Bandit 2? I don't know. I would assume it was the same one, but I don't know. There is a guy on eBay that makes carpet kits. I asked him to come on to the group and he said he doesn't have time to deal with more Trans Am kits. And so I just said, okay, fine, have it your way. If he doesn't have time for us buying carpet kits, then I think we should look elsewhere. But I like what I see. And what we are going to be doing, when we get further down the line here, after we get the outside of the car done, what we are going to be doing is a trunk interior. We're going to be doing door jams. We're going to need photos of the whole door jam, the whole structure. Measurements. We're going to need measurements to get it somewhat accurate to where it looks accurate. You're not going to be able to latch the door. I don't know if we're going to have the door striker, you know, the door lock pin. But you can put magnets in here and it'll actually shut and stay shut. Um, we're working on that. I know, we're, I know we've already talked about that, or I've talked about that with Gary. That's coming. <clears throat> on the underside of the hood there was a felt or there was a some sort of a sound deadener I'm gonna need photos of what that looks like guys and what it feels like looks like or what kind of material it is so all of this is coming and I need you guys help the ones that have uh, own actual cars one of these days anybody lives nor near Salt Lake um, that has a 77 Trans Am with the 400 I need to record it running I need to record it starting up running revving and turning off also with the 79 TA the same way we're going to do a sound card so moving on we got the tires They should be let's see if they're sealed. Nope. Eight shut. I think these are BF Goodrich. I'm not sure. Has any model kit ever had the correct wheels on a movie car? No. Goodyear Eagle GTs. I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think Eagle GTs were made in 79. I think those are fairly new. Um, not fairly new, I mean, but I don't know if the movie car had Eagle GTs. I kind of doubt it. I'll have to watch the movie again. I always be under the impression that they were BF Goodriches. That's where my movie car knowledge fades. What is wrong with this tape? All right, so moving on to the decals. Wow. They have, um, God, what was the license plate number for that? Joe Dirt, I think. There's Bandit. Band 1, Florida. Bandit was the front. Band 1 was the rear. Bandit goes on the side of the fenders. 
Here's all of your engine decals. Really, really nice. And these are decals that already, um, you don't have to cut out perfect circles. They have a clear rise on them that they'll float right off. Really, really nice. And look at this. Nice, nice, nice. So some of you are probably looking at this going, holy smoke, look at all of those thin, thin, thin pinstripes. We have somebody, we have somebody that's working on doing um, reproductions so that we can have spares. We're working on that. Nice, nice, nice. What else we got? I think that's it. Oh, what is this? Um, screws for something. I'll have to look at the uh, instructions. Okay. Um, I'm going to look at my comments. I don't see any comments, so I'm going to go ahead and put all this stuff away and um, hang out for a minute until uh, see if anybody has a question, wants to see something specifically. From what I see, I really, really like the kit. I, I think, um, I think uh, Revel uh, went. <clears throat> I don't think they went overboard. I don't think they went the extra mile. I think they did a good job. Um, personally, I think. To go the extra mile, they would have had to remove the, the fender flares and make them separate. Two, the T-tops, the glass for the T-top should have been in a smoke colored or tinted color, a red tail light. Um, that would have went the extra mile. Am I asking too much? Maybe. Um, I can remember when buying a 1 8 scale kit was $45, and that was a lot of money. Um, this one was 130 times 3 plus $68 shipping for all three. So do the math. 400 and, it came out to like $460 total. But um, I like what I see. I, I really do. I think it's going to make a very nice model by itself. Is it accurate? Probably not. Can we make it accurate? You bet your ass. Um, with your guys' help, we're going to... Uh, one of my favorite quotes, the reason that I have all of these modeling groups is to take it to the next level. So hopefully I inspire somebody to take it to the next level, then they can take it to the next level, then somebody else can take it to the next level. <clears throat> Short of having a model that starts up 
or at least turns the fan blades, um, the pulleys and everything else. Headlights, high beams, turn signals, brake lights, opening doors with the accurate uh, door structure. Uh, door jam, that's the word I was looking for. Um, it's going to be a long process. So, one of these is going to go out to uh, Gary Shedder. I'm going to get it packed up tonight, get it sent. Uh, my two are going to go into storage until we're done because one of them is going to be um, Smokey and the Bandit uh, 2 and the other one is going to be Smokey and the Bandit, the first movie. So, guys, thank you. Um, 154 parts and... Level 5, it should be level 9.9, .9, not level 5. I've seen some level 5 kits that were something so simple for me that any neighborhood kid, uh, neighborhood 6-year-old could put them together. This should be level 9.9. .9. From what I see here, there's a lot here. Anyway, you guys have a good night. Ciao.